Uh, look at Psalm 126, you know. Um, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I feel like laughing. Um, I don't know why it happens to me often here, but either I need it or you need it, or both. <laughs> Psalm 126, look at that real quickly here. And it um, says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Actually, the word again there, the Lord turned again, means he already turned it once. And sometimes a turnaround in your life takes more than one turn. And tonight, some things are going to turn. I said, some things are going to turn tonight. Turn. Turn in your life. Turn in your health. Turn in your finances. Turn in your family. Turn. So sometimes things turn more than once. Sometimes you can leave a place of prayer or a meeting or something. You say, some turn tonight. Amen. And evidence of that turn will show up. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so he says, when the Lord turned again, means he already turned it once, now he turned again the captivity of Zion, said we were like those that dream. One translation just simply says it seemed too good to be true. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 In other words, God wants things in our life to happen that it just, you like, it just seems like a dream. Amen. Seems too good to be true. Amen. Not just once. Come on, two or three, four things. I know when I saw Trina and then in the, and at college, and I saw her immediately, I used my faith. <laughs> I said, I may not be able to get her on my looks, but I can get her on my faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I saw her, I said, I'm well able to possess the land. <laughs> so I told my friends, I'm going to ask that girl out on a date. They said, I bet you won't. I said, I bet I will. You watch. So I went right to and asked her on a date. Of course, she's more spiritual than I am. And she said, I need to pray about it. I'm more spiritual than she was at that moment. And I said, well, let's just pray right now. I said, you know, God's really not that far away. Matter of fact, I said, let's just join hands. Kind of a little trick, but also a spiritual thing. <laughs> I didn't know her that well. You know, so let's join hands. She's, all right, so she's very spiritual. So let's pray. So I said, Lord, if you want Trent to go out on a date with me tonight, I just ask you right now, sure would be nice for me, and Lord, I know it would be your will, but make sure that, just let her know. In Jesus' name, we thank you for that right now. I said, what did the Lord tell you? She said, well, I'm not sure. I said, well, he told me yes. I said, so I'll pick you up at seven. Let me know if he says anything different or I'll see you at seven. <laughs> you got to do some things totally by faith, right? So, <laughs> uh, then, then we started dating and things turned a little bit more. Then we got married and I said, it's like a dream. We've been married 43 years and a dream, 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 43 years and kids that love Jesus, right? And kids serving the Lord and so uh, blessed. But that was like a dream. You know, God brings dreams to pass. Amen. And so more than one thing in my life that I would have to say has happened that I would just have to say, that's like a dream. Come on, more than I could have ever asked for, more than I could even really have thought about, God is able to do things that are beyond what I can even put into words, ask for, more than I could even think about right now, according to his power that works in us. And so when the Lord turned our captivity, he says, like a dream. Amen. He said, then was our mouth, look at the next verse, said our mouth is filled with laughter. It was simply laughter means I just couldn't stop laughing. I see some of y'all hadn't done that in a while. But anyway, he said, 
my mouth was filled with laughter. <laughs> Which means I was just so happy I couldn't stop laughing. Now, you know the physical benefits of laughing, you know. It's just laughter is good for your health. It makes it as good like a medicine, Scripture says. But even medical doctors, you know, your endorphins come out. Some of y'all, your endorphins hadn't been out in a long time. <laughs> if they came out, they'd be wearing bell-bottom blue jeans and platform <laughs> shoes. But God basically designed you to be happy. That's why it says Jesus has born, carried our griefs, our sorrows, and lifted them from us. Come on, in God's original plan of creation, like a dream. In redemption, like a dream. He designed for you to be happy. So the devil's trying his best to bring grief and sorrow and shame, confusion, stress, anxiety, because that'll kill you faster than smoking will. People are angry, under a lot of stress. And so the physical benefits of being happy are actually, uh, Dr. Avery Jackson was just on Brother Copeland's program, and he is a neurosurgeon in, in uh, Detroit. And we were having a meeting in, at uh, Bishop Butler's church, and he was sitting on the front. And the joy of the Lord just kind of started happening, you know. And I looked there. I didn't even know who he was. You know, he's on the front row. He was laughing so hard. He just kept laughing and laughing and laughing. He laughed the whole time. And later on, I found he's one of the best neurosurgeons in America. Thousands of brain surgeries. And he's just laughing. <laughs> laughing. Like, wow, you know, because normally you'd think a guy like that couldn't be real educated. I mean, because <laughs> anybody's happy like that, they must be missing out on a few things. But he laughed and laughed and laughed. And so medical science has determined that your body cannot tell the difference between a fake laugh and a real laugh. Simply meaning that you get the same physical benefits with a fake laugh. So you may not have Pastor Max jokes always available. And even some of them may require a fake laugh. <laughs> Courtesy laugh. <laughs> but your body can't tell the difference. But we're not going to call it a fake laugh. We're just going to call it a faith laugh. Amen. Amen. Laughing by faith, Amen. Yes. even if you don't feel like it or if it don't look like everything's working to your good. And so you just laugh by faith. Then there's another kind of laugh, which we're going to call joy in the Holy Ghost. And Dad Hagen said one of the great characteristics of the move of the Holy Ghost is this joy. He said that people will be rejoicing and laughing and dancing and shouting and just, I mean, just plump getting ugly. In other words, laughing, enjoying the presence of God because in his presence is fullness of joy. Amen. And yet you see people that say, I pray a lot. I pray all the time. I pray every day. You're like, that ain't helping a lot, is it? So, so, <laughs> and so I've just been with the Lord. And I said, I don't know where you've been, but I don't think you've been with the Lord. Because after you've been with the Lord, you come out there like this. Everything's going to be all right. I've been with the Lord. <laughs> Don't need to fight in this battle. <laughs> the battle is the Lord's. Victory is mine. <laughs> so I'm going to praise the Lord. Give him glory. Amen. 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 So he said, we were like those that dream. Our mouth was filled with laughter. Our tongue was singing. Then the heathen said, the Lord has done great things for them. Amen. Did you know the Lord really wants to have some heathens talking about you? They're not real happy about it. How'd you get that out? <laughs> In my case, my experience, 
is we just got 30 acres, most beautiful property in central Louisiana on Highway 165, right between my house and the church. And our offices in the church have gotten too small for 10 years. You understand, I'm kind of a slow learner. But for 10 years, <laughs> how many have prayed for something for 10 years? So for 10 years, we're praying and believing, you know, and, and sowing for 10 years. And, and finally, Trent is like, you know, um, we need to really get serious about this. In our believing, in our speaking, of course, in our, our sowing, in every area, get serious about it. So we started cranking it up, so we started looking and looking and looking, and um, I couldn't find it. Actually, I was really looking for like three acres, maybe five, little building, <laughs> nothing too big. <laughs> I swear, I'm looking, looking, right? And so a piece of property that I drove by every day for over 30 years, Belonged to a very wealthy person. 30 acres had two big, beautiful buildings, uh, barns that they used for uh, some for weddings and special events, a five acre lake, come on, had over $10,000 worth of bass, you know, and in this lake. Found out, got some bucks and some deer on the property, so the dream is starting to get bigger now. So I'd dr driven by that property for, for 30 years. Listen, never, I always admired it, but I never asked God for it. Yeah. Never even thought. Drove by for 30 years. I have me in town, real estate agent from our church called, said there's a piece of property that just went up for sale. I said, where? She said, you know that piece of property? I said, I know that piece of property. She, I said, you sure that piece of property? She said, that piece of property that went up for sale. And I happened to be in town, I said, I'll meet you there right now. So they got, you know, uh, brick columns and big gates, you know, to get in. So it was all closed up. But I got a Ford Raptor. <laughs> I drove around the back, found a hole in the fence, drove right up in the property. And as soon as we got in, Trent was like, Mark, you think you ought to be doing this? I said, I think I ought to. Anyway, driving right in there. And so, <laughs> as soon as we drove in there, I said, well, this is our property right here. Well, look at here. The Lord said, that's your property. So real estate agent finally, she comes in there, opens the gates. So she finally comes in. <laughs> what you doing here? Anyway, so she comes in. <laughs> I said, my property, that's what I'm doing here. So she came in, told me what the deal was. And so the, I said, uh, I want it, sign me up. She said, well, don't you want to look at it? I said, I see it, sign it. <laughs> No, I don't want to look. I want it now. Turn it in now. Okay. She said, how much you want to offer? Whatever he's asking because it's my property. Amen. Found out later it's a good thing I didn't make a lower offer because there were several wealthy men in the area that had already offered him well over my offer in cash. Anyway, we got the property. So the people down at the bank, the country store, saying, how did that preacher get that property? How did that preacher get that property? And I went, I don't know. <laughs> so here's what the Lord said to me. I want you to try to get this just for a moment. All the meetings, the Lord said, every time you were in those meetings where the joy of the Lord was flowing and you started laughing and rejoicing and praising, now listen to this, all those meetings where you started laughing and rejoicing and praising, sometimes worse. I was in one of the meetings at Dad Hague's meetings where, uh, where the board members started rolling on the floor. And that was 20 years ago or something. Uh, Brother Abner Yoder, his business did $150 million that year. All the rest of them were multimillionaires and they were in their suits rolling on the floor. And I was sitting back there watching. I thought, that's, that's cute, you know, cool. Look at that, funny. All the millionaires rolling on the floor. <laughs> and the Lord said, uh, why don't you get your broke self down there and roll with them? I said, that's rude, you're talking to me.
So I looked at another pastor, I said, if you roll, I'll roll. I said, we don't have no scripture for it, but we don't have none against it. <laughs> so we got up, went down there, and just started rolling. Uh, Sometimes I'd run, you know, you get older, you can't run as much. Sometimes I'd dance, you know. Sometimes you can't dance as long if you get older. You just kind of scoot around a little bit. But, uh, you know, I, 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 like Pastor Mac, he goes. <laughs> after, after praise and worship, you can see him up here like, oh my God. He's stretching. You know when you have to stretch before you go to church, you got a Holy Ghost church there. <laughs> so on the day of Pentecost, people started receiving and, and receiving from the Holy Ghost, so they just got acted intoxicated. That means you can drink from the presence of the Lord, yield to the anointing of the Holy Ghost until you lose your mind. I tell people, if you knew how little you had to lose, you would let it go. <laughs> so here's what the Lord said to me. He said, all those meetings where you're rejoicing and laughing, you know, the Lord don't make you laugh. You, you actually have to participate. Come on, if he made you anything, he'd have made you good looking that hadn't yet. So he ain't gonna make you laugh. He don't make you get saved. He don't make you talk in tongues. He ain't gonna make you laugh. Made you do anything, make you pay your tithes. That hadn't happened yet. So I'm saying he ain't gonna make you tithe. He don't make you tithe. He don't make you give. Come on. He don't make you run. He don't make you rejoice. He don't make you do any of that. It's an act of faith in yielding to the Holy Ghost and acting on the promises of God. Come on, so the Holy Spirit started moving. Dad Hagen said, well, you start laughing or you might run a dance or something like that. And so I, I started laughing. So here's what the Lord said to me. When, I, when we got on that property, the Lord said to me, all those times you were laughing and praising and rejoicing, you really were laughing about something. All right, well, let's try this out over here. So when we got on the property, the Lord said, this is your property, I was at my property. And the Lord said, all those times, he said this to me right while we, we started praising on the property. The Lord said, all those times you were praising and laughing and rejoicing, you really were laughing about something. <laughs> if I'd have known what I was laughing about, I said, if you knew what you were laughing about, if I'd have known what I was praising about, if I'd have known what I was rejoicing about. So sometimes you know what you're rejoicing about and sometimes you don't know what you're rejoicing about. In other words, God has plans for you that are beyond what you can ask or think. You never even thought about it, and he's working on it for you right now. It may seem like it's taking a little bit longer than you thought, but he's working on it right now. Go ahead and shout about it and rejoice about it and laugh about it. Ha, ha, ha. Go ahead and practice for a minute. See something. <laughs> Try to get your motor started. <laughs> and so the Lord acts to have you laughing at the most unusual time. Sometimes you'll even explain to him, you know, it's not a good time right now. <laughs> if you knew what I was going through right now, you wouldn't even suggest that. 
I mean, if we just had George Jones singing, he stopped loving her today, I mean, I would like that a little bit better. <laughs> it just seemed like some people actually like sad things better than glad things. But there's something about the joy of the Lord. There's something about rejoicing Amen. that is connected to your faith. Oh, that's right. I said, there's something about rejoicing that's connected to your faith. Ha, ha, ha. Matter of fact, Dad Hagen said, when things get a little bit tough and the pressure is on, he said, I actually laugh more in those times. Yes. That's right. That's right. Amen. But people don't connect it. They're like, I want you to know I'm believing right now. I'm believing and believing and believing. <laughs> Don't you know I'm in a fight right now and I'm believing. All right, let's see if we can get our believing straightened out here. In James chapter one, verse two, he says, y'all ready for this? Yes. Count it. Amen. Count it all joy. Now, I don't believe God's telling us to do that just to make us look bad. God's like, just do that because I told you. I could zap you with lightning any minute. No, when he says, <laughs> he says, count it all joy. When he says all joy, other translations say maximum joy. That means when you're having difficulty, and it looks like the promise is not coming to pass. He said, you need to turn your joy up. Turn your joy up. Come on. One joy. I see some of you. One joy is kind of like a smile. It's like. I see some of y'all struggling with that. Just try smiling at people in a public place, you know, at an airport or somewhere. And people look at you, what's wrong with you smiling at me? You weirdo. <laughs> so one joy, that's just kind of like a smile. Sometimes you just need to look in the mirror and say, look, this is what other people have to look at. <laughs> Talk about saving the environment. Because if you're happy, it actually makes you better looking. Don't look at anybody right now, but I'm telling you. All that cream and stuff you've been using, and if you're laughing, it makes you better looking. Our people actually forget that you're ugly. Our, our, I got the t-shirt that says, I might be fat, but you're ugly, and I can lose weight. All right, so anyway. All right, let's keep going. Come on, I saw one in the airport here. It said, friends don't let friends live in Wisconsin. Yeah, I said it here in Minnesota. Anyway. All right. So. <laughs> when he says, count it all joy, I mean, turn your joy up. So smile is one joy. Come on. Two joy be kind of like, huh, huh, huh. <laughs> three joy, just keep laughing, just keep laughing. Four joy might be kind of do a little jump. <laughs> Five joy would be shout. <laughs> Six joy would be take a little run, you know, I know. Don't do the whole place, maybe pick a section, but take a little run. <laughs> Seven joy be dance, start dancing. Do a little dance before the Lord. I have a, a friend that's a, a kind of a larger preacher. And uh, he said there in the service, people rejoicing. And he said, one little lady started dancing. And he said, Lord, he said, Lord, I wish you'd give me a dance like that. And the Lord said, son, a dance ain't something I give you. It's something you give me. Ah. 
In other words, when you start laughing and rejoicing, sometimes the anointing of the Holy Ghost will come on you, and you're just like, that ain't enough. I just need to jump and spin around and do a little dance. Somebody said, why are you doing that? Woo, I'm expecting a dream coming to pass. It may not even look like it right now, but while I'm laughing and rejoicing, God is doing things beyond what I can even ask or think. So I'm gonna praise, I'm gonna rejoice, I'm gonna give him thanks, I'm gonna expect his miracles, I'm gonna expect miracles, I'm gonna praise a while, I'm gonna rejoice a while, I'm gonna dance a while. Ha, ha, ha. Count it all joy. Knowing this, ha, ha, ha. Come on, you can't get happy unless you know this. Once you know this, you're like, aha, the trying of my faith works patience. That means I can outlast the devil. That means if everything don't change by Friday, I'm gonna keep laughing. I'm gonna keep praising. I'm gonna keep rejoicing knowing this. The trying of my faith works patience. Let patience have its perfect work that you may be what? Perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Well, you ought to shout about that. I said, wanting nothing. Woo! Ha, ha, ha. All right, go to 1 Peter 1, 8. It's taking me a while, praise the Lord. 1 Peter 1, 8, 9. You ready? Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you love Jesus. You know him. You never, you've never seen him with your natural eyes, yet you love him. Yet believing, you rejoice. Everybody say rejoice. rejoice. He says rejoice with joy unspeakable. That means the joy is too great for words. So if you can say you're happy, then that's not this. In other words, people ought to be able to tell you're happy without you saying anything. In other words, you could be happy in any language. Come on, you could be in China. <laughs> you could be in Brazil, or Portuguese. And you can tell when people are happy, you can't understand a word they're saying. <laughs> I don't know what they said, but they're real happy about something. <laughs> so he said, this joy is unspeakable, and he said it is full of glory. Full of glory. So other translations say it is heavenly triumphant joy. Or... T.D. Jake said, if you don't rejoice, the devil will think he's winning. In other words, the devil don't know everything. He's just got to cause trouble and see how you act. Come on, when he hits you with a few different problems and you go, not again. Why me, Lord? And he says, I hit him again. He's going down. <laughs> Come on, but if he hits you and you go, ha, 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 ha. You're letting the devil know that's not going to work on you. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So no matter what's happening outside of you, the joy of the Lord on the inside of you. Ha, 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 ha. Practice a while. Ha, ha, ha. Or be like Dad Hagen, listen. He said before he ever was spirit-filled as a Baptist believer with the Holy Spirit in him, but never spirit-filled yet. He said when the devil would bring symptoms against his body, he said I would laugh out loud and say, ha ha, devil, you can't do that to me. <laughs> All right, let's try this out over here. Come on, when the symptoms would come, come on, our thoughts would come, he would just go, ha ha. Devil, you can't do that to me. Let's try this out over here. Come on. When the devil hits you with something, you go, ha ha. Devil, you can't do that to me. 
You can't do that to my body. You can't do that to my mind. You can't do that in my life. I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Ha ha, you can't do that to me. This is practice laughing. Ha ha, you can't do that to me. Come on, the devil bring all kinds of pictures of, uh, you know, I, I heard Brother Copeland say this many years ago. He said, the devil will kill you with a hangnail if he thought he could get away with it. <laughs> Fear. You remember when he told a story about him having a tick on his neck? He, years ago, he told a story about, he said he was out somewhere and he felt on his, <laughs> felt on his neck and he went, he went, what is that? Oh, it's a growth back there. What is that on my neck? He said, oh my God. He said, all the thoughts came to me. It's cancer, it's cancer. You're gonna die, it's cancer. He said, it's, got a, it's cancer. He said, oh, I don't know what I feel like. A hand's gonna be cancer. Oh my God, oh my God. He went home, asked Glory, Glory, what, what is that on my neck? She said, it's a tick, it's a tick. We gotta get that tick off. <laughs> Come on, the devil bring one little thing. You go, oh my God, oh my God. You, go, ha -ha, you can't do that to me, Mr. Devil. Come on, one thought come to you and you're like, um. <laughs> Listen, if the devil could kill you anytime he wanted, you'd already be dead. That's right. He has no power over you. Come on, Jesus is your Lord. You're redeemed by the blood. So you can actually laugh in the face of the enemy and say, ha, 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 devil, that ain't gonna work on me. Come on, say, ha, ha, that ain't gonna work on me. Ha, 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 that ain't gonna work on me. That ain't gonna work on me. Ha, ha, ha. While you're praising and while you're rejoicing, he says, yet believing, you rejoice. Sometimes you just need somebody to help you rejoice. You need a rejoicer or helper. If you're married, sometimes your wife will volunteer, you know, your husband. Like you're mad about something, you know. One time I was walking through the, through the living room and I was mad about something, you know. I'm mad, I'm you, well, I'm mad, I'm mad. It makes me mad. How many of you ever got mad? Boy, you just get mad in the South. I don't know what you do up here. I'm just mad. Man, I'm like, man. And uh, Trina said, uh, why don't we just rejoice a while? I said, why don't you leave me alone? <laughs> and I walked out of there and helped me to rejoice. Said, no. I've got a good reason to be mad right now. How I many you ever counted your reasons to be mad? That helps a lot, don't it? I've got several reasons right now. So I'm walking out of the house, and the Lord's taught me like that. He said, you know, your wife is right. I said, Lord, that is a terrible thing for you to say to me right now. How can you say that to me? He said, so turn around and go back in there and rejoice with your wife and I'll turn that situation around. I went, oh man, this is killing me. <laughs> so I turned back around, went back in there and I said, I said okay, turn it, you're right. So let's rejoice. She said, why don't we dance? I went, oh my God, <laughs> you wanna dance? I was just gonna try to give a happy thanks to the Lord right now. That's true. <laughs> You're getting too extreme here. And you know nobody's watching, you're in your own house. Come on, if you're self-conscious while you're alone, you got mental problems. So here I am, embarrassed, in my own house. And nobody's watching, I'm like, oh, this is embarrassing for me. 
Come on, sometimes just go in the bedroom by yourself, close the door, just jump around, jump around, around. <laughs> The devil says, what you doing about it? I said, I'm laughing at you. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> the most complicated problems will come unraveled. Yes. Let's try that one more time. I said, the most complicated problems will come unraveled. Uh, I said, the most complicated problems will come unraveled by the power of the Holy Ghost while you are rejoicing and praising and laughing, ha, 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 the most complicated situations, whoa, look like it's gonna be something terrible and it turned out to be nothing. Ha, ha, woo, glory to God. Somebody said, well, that's not my personality. Really, that surprises me. <laughs> Count it all joy is not a personality. I know you don't have a cap, cap with that on there, you know. Like, count it all joy. <laughs> it's my personality. <laughs> no, count it all joy is just simply an instruction. A lot of the word of God is promises, a lot of prophecy, but a lot of the word is just simply an instruction. God said, if you'll follow this instruction, you'll get supernatural results. Woo, ha, 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 yet believing, come on, that's an act of faith. I'm gonna go ahead and rejoice. Why? Because while I'm laughing, while I'm rejoicing, it's not just goofy time at church. All oh, goofy time. Are we gonna have goofy time tonight? <laughs> I wanna get into something deep, really deep. I mean, I was looking for some theological, even a few Greek words here. <laughs> Philippians, Philippians chapter four, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Amen. Come on, in four chapters, Paul says rejoice 16 times. And a guy asked me, he said, uh, now what is the Greek word for that? I said, you ain't doing the English word yet. When you get finished with the English word, we'll switch over to the Greek word. So the Lord says to me, People are like, ah, it's getting deep now. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Lord said to me, if you only knew what happens in the spirit when you rejoice, yeah. you would rejoice every day. Amen. How many ever missed a day? Two days, three days, some of you three weeks. He said, you would rejoice every day, make it a lifestyle, come on. You're praying, you're praising, and then begin to rejoice. He said, your joy is a demonstration of the triumph of Christ. And then he said this to me, come on, because I needed a lot of help in this area. He said, your celebration is a demonstration of your expectation. He said, if you're expecting me to do things beyond what you can ask or think, go ahead and celebrate like you really believe that. Go ahead and praise like you really believe that. Woo! Come on, what's coming up in 2020? Oh, come on, God is turning my captivity. Well, he's turning things around. Already started it. What's happening the next year? Oh, the Lord, ha, ha, ha. It's like a dream coming to pass. Woo! Go ahead and shout about it right now. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. 
So you laughing at me? <laughs> I first started laughing when I saw my identification with Christ. Made alive with him, raised up with him. I was only 17 years old. And when I first saw that, I went, because <laughs> I'm not down here. Come on, trying to get up there. I'm up here. And the devil way down there. And I went, <laughs> Let's check this picture out here. Are y'all still here? So I started laughing. So ever since then, sometimes when I'm preaching, I just start laughing. People go, is he laughing at me? <laughs> no, you ain't that funny. Listen. <laughs> There's something about the fruit of the Spirit, which is joy, that you can actually grow in it. Matter of fact, you could be happier next year than you were this year. How many of y'all plan on being happier next year than you were this year? You're like, <laughs> matter of fact, the Lord turned my grief and my sorrow morning into dancing. I got rid of my old sad clothes and I started praising and rejoicing before the Lord. Now listen, here's, here's, here's the quote I love from C.S. Lewis. He said, joy is the serious business of heaven. I just thought you just can't say it no better now. Joy is the serious business of heaven. Amen. All right, let's just cut off a word there and just say, joy is serious business. Amen. Amen. So while you're rejoicing, people say, what you doing? You say, excuse me, I'm taking care of some serious business right now. <laughs> ah, come on now. <laughs> In other words, while I'm praising and rejoicing and laughing, <laughs> even the anointing of the Holy Ghost, fresh oil, called the oil of joy, you cannot get a sad anointing. <laughs> God didn't say, all right, we're gonna make everybody happy except a few of y'all, we're gonna give you the sad anointing. No, the oil of joy, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. While you're praising and while you're laughing, sometimes you ought to tell the people around you, say, excuse me tonight, um, I really need to take care of some serious business, so I hope you don't get hurt. I don't want to hurt your feelings any, but I've, I've been having some challenges in my life, so. I'm gonna to have to take care of some serious business now. So first chance I get, there's gonna be some shouting and some hollering and some rejoicing and stuff like that. So hope I don't stomp on your toe or nothing, but, but I'm gonna start rejoicing <laughs> because I believe the Lord is turning my captivity. It's like a dream coming to pass. Ha, 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 ha. In other words, all those times while you're laughing and praising, come on. All right, let's try it one more time. All those times where you're laughing and praising and rejoicing, making a joyful noise, shouting to the Lord while you're doing that. He said, you really were laughing about something. All right, come on, let's try that one more time. All those times you're laughing and praising and shouting and rejoicing. The Lord said, you really were shouting and laughing about something. Come on, you thought you're just following instructions, but God's got something in mind for you that's beyond what you can ask or think. So while I'm praising, while I'm rejoicing, while I'm laughing, while I'm jumping around,